It's a nice sunny day when the commercial plane IA-42 starts its flight from Dallas to London with pilots William and Daniel. The trip starts smoothly, but after just a few moments, the flight instruments begin behaving in a strange way. William calls ground control for help, but they are told that the skies are clear and they should keep going. The pilots only get a second of relief because suddenly they see a huge storm right in front of them. Yet ground control is sure that the storm wasn't there five seconds ago. They have no choice but to fly right through it, so William informs the passengers that they will be going through some turbulence. The plane starts shaking like crazy as the pilots fly it through the raging storm, which suspiciously glows as they pass through it. Soon the plane stabilizes and flies normally again, but the pilots are shocked to discover that the skies are completely dark, as if night suddenly arrived in seconds. William tells the passengers this is just a funny effect that happens when flying above the Bermuda Triangle as an excuse to keep them calm. However the passengers worry anyway when they notice their phones and computers don't have a connection. In the cabin, most of the flight instruments are down as well and William is unable to make contact with ground control. Since the radar still works though, the pilots consider it enough to keep going for now. Meanwhile the flight attendants hand out the refreshments and tell everyone not to worry because it was normal turbulence. Cameron chit-chats with two men who happen to be historians and learns they are traveling to London to analyze some recently discovered artifacts from the war. There's also an old man writing down every detail of what happens to him on his notebook. After a few moments, the pilots are unable to find any other aircraft on their radar, which is quite worrisome and could mean the storm blew them off course. William decides to fly the plane in a loop in order to find someone, but even after descending, they don't recognize any location. Suddenly something appears on their radar and at first they think it's a storm, but the truth is more disturbing. It's a bunch of fighter planes bombarding a city as if they were at war. The passengers immediately start panicking as they see buildings blowing up under the plane and fire all over the area, but the historians can't help noticing something curious. The pilots have no idea of what to do but before they can discuss options, they suddenly see some fighter planes surrounding them. These fighters are ready to open fire on them, but thanks to the radar, the pilots manage to quickly fly the plane away from them and go higher in the sky. The passengers are getting nervous and demand explanations, so Cameron does her best to calm them down. Michael is too rude and aggressive and even dares to grab Cameron, but another flight attendant gets him to behave after threatening to tie him up. William keeps on trying to contact ground control to no avail, so he decides to descend again to try to figure out where they are. Daniel at first is wary because they may be attacked again, but William points out they're running out of fuel so they need to solve this fast. At that moment the historians tell Cameron they may know something and convince her to take them to see the pilots, unaware that Michael follows them and overhears the conversation. The historians tell the pilots that the fighter planes they just saw haven't been made since 1945 and belong to the Luftwaffe, the Nazi Air Force. William doesn't take them seriously and tries to kick them out, but the historians guess that the plane has lost all signals, so William decides to give them a chance. The historians theorize that the plane has traveled back to 1940 and they now are in the middle of World War II, and if they were brought here by an anomaly, then they must find another one that can send them back. The idea of time traveling still sounds stupid to William, so he sends them back to their seats and asks them not to tell anyone about their crazy theory. Michael also rushes back to his seat before they can see him and when Cameron passes by, he tries grabbing her again, but Cameron gets intimating enough to make him let go. After she's gone, Michael begins keeping a close ear on the historians behind him, who are using their books and calculations to try to figure things out. Afterward, the pilots go down again to search for any radio signals. Fortunately this time they are successful and get in contact with a British soldier called Nigel, who thinks they are spies messing with him because it's impossible to catch a radio signal from a plane flying that high. The pilots beg for help and when Nigel continues to be confused, William asks for the date, causing Nigel to confirm the historian's theory, they are on June 17, 1940. They try to convince Nigel of their situation but obviously it sounds too crazy to be believed, luckily the historians come to the cabin again with more details and they get to talk to Nigel. They have calculated their approximate location and mention they flew by the spot where the British ship Lancastria was sunk, which shocks Nigel because that ship is supposed to still be active. Nigel decides he'll check with his superior if the story about the ship is true and promises to call back. While the historians are away, Michael takes their books and finally puts two and two together. Furious, he stands up and tells the other passengers what's going on, saying they could kill Hitler and stop World War II using the information from the book. Most passengers don't take him seriously and laugh at him, but a couple of guys do believe him and agree to help him hijack the cockpit. Luckily there are two American soldiers traveling on this flight too and they quickly cut in, explaining hijacking a cockpit counts as terrorism no matter their intentions. This triggers a fight that even the flight attendants join, and after a few hits are exchanged, the soldiers manage to overpower the hijackers and send them back to their seats before threatening everyone else into behaving. Minutes later, Nigel gets in contact with them and confirms that their information about Lancastria was right, in fact their intel helped them rescue a lot of people, so now Nigel trusts them. However he also mentions a few missions that have gone differently from what the historians know about the war, which means they are in an alternate version of the past. 
Nigel is ready to help them land the plane but first they need to know their exact location, sadly William and the historians can only offer a rough estimate. Daniel turns on their lights so they can be seen by the British soldiers, however the Germans are spying on their conversation and send out orders. Soon a bunch of fighter planes surround them to immediately open fire, so after turning off the lights, William uses his piloting experience to dodge all the bullets while all the passengers scream in fear. When the bullets become too much to handle, he suddenly drops the plane, letting it fall for a few seconds only to take it back upright before it hits the ground. The Germans follow him, but their old planes don't have the same steering capabilities and most of them crash to the ground. Unfortunately two planes survive and shoot at the cabin, hurting Daniel and leaving a few holes in the plane. While William successfully flies them out of enemy reach, the flight attendants rush in to plug the holes and use their first aid knowledge to patch Daniel up. William is getting worried over the lack of fuel and the fact the shots damaged their landing wheels, he also can't get in contact with Nigel, so Cameron convinces him to talk to the passengers to work together. Meanwhile a superior tells Nigel that if he doesn't get news from his mysterious friends soon, they'll blow up the plane before it falls into the hands of the Germans. After leaving Daniel at the controls, William goes to talk to the passengers to finally confess the truth. He explains that he's trying his best to land the plane, but the recent attack damaged the landing wheel so he will need help fixing it. Teresa reveals she's an engineer and accepts to come, inspiring a handyman called Hector to volunteer as well. William takes his new team to the plane's tail and thankfully Teresa manages to find the problem quickly, so she begins fixing it with Hector's help. When she's done, she manages to open the door, yet the wheel won't come down because there's something stuck on it. William volunteers to go down, but Hector says the captain is needed to fly the plane so he'll do it instead. Hector carefully climbs on the landing wheel and uses a hammer to fix the issue. The wheel immediately begins moving and Hector has to hang on tight not to fall, but thankfully the wheel comes back up without anyone getting hurt. William rushes back to the cabin and with Daniel's help, they fly lower to get a radio signal again. They contact Nigel to mention they only have 80 minutes of fuel left so they need to land as soon as possible. Their conversation is interrupted the two German planes come back and attack them. This time they throw a missile, which explodes too close and destroys all the plane's windows. While the passengers panic, William uses the radar to keep track of the enemies, allowing him to pull some crazy maneuvers that cause the German planes to crash into each other. Afterward the historians come up with an idea, they should remove the plane's radar and send it to Nigel so he can use it to guide them somewhere safe. It doesn't make sense that they don't have this technology yet, so maybe the plane was sent to the past to fix that issue. At that moment a missile hits a turbine, so the plane starts falling at great speed. After a few failed tries, the pilots get it to work again and manage to get in contact with Nigel to agree on a location to drop the radar. Then it's revealed the missile came from the British, but Nigel tells his superior to stop the fire and go pick up the radar. On the plane, everyone works together to make the package. The old man reveals he bought some toy parachutes for his grandkids and donates them to the cause, and a few passengers hand in their USB batteries. Then they wrap the radar up in a bunch of clothes in a bag and connect it to the parachutes. As soon as they reach the right spot, they throw it off the plane and immediately tell Nigel about it, but unfortunately the Nazis pick up this conversation too and arrive first. A German soldier begins climbing a tree to reach the package but at that moment, a few soldiers from the British army arrive and a gunfight ensues. Fortunately the British have the upper hand and one by one they kill all the Germans to then successfully retrieve the package. The Nazis also send more planes after William's aircraft and this time they land a shot on the plane's side, creating a big hole through which a few people fall. The plane is shaking quite badly, but William once again pulls a crazy move to guide the plane away from danger. As soon as Nigel receives the radar, he sets it up and starts guiding William to fly in the right direction, although the Nazis are catching up to them. When they are about to open fire, the British planes sent by Nigel arrive to fight back, so the commercial plane can keep flying safely. Suddenly, Nigel sees a large shadow on the radar that doesn't look like any kind of aircraft, and when the plane gets closer they realize it is a storm that looks exactly like the one that brought them to this time period. It's a risky move, but since they don't have any fuel left anyway, William decides to fly through it and hopes it'll send them back to the present. After saying goodbye to Nigel and telling the passengers to hold on, William and Daniel take the plane through the storm, and after lots of shaking, they are happy to see they are finally back in the present. It seems they are flying above Berlin, and luckily ground control immediately contacts them to offer them an empty runway to land on. The pilots push the plane to its limits and manage to land it safely. Relieved to be home, the passengers immediately get off the plane. When William leaves the cabin, he finds the old man still on his seat writing in his notebook, which has a map that looks like the route they just followed and has been titled the radar system that saved Europe. When the old man closes this book, it's revealed his name is Nigel, meaning this is the guy who saved them back in 1940. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.